look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 in hindsight We make mistakes, we're learning from the in hindsight be yours today and your tomorrow In hindsight is so much clearer now Imagine moving to a foreign country at 27, tasked with training over 500 employees in a high stakes environment. What mindset would it take to thrive in such a scenario? Today's guest on Hindsight the Podcast is Richard Blank, CEO of Costa Rica's Call Center. Richard's journey from the United States to Costa Rica is a testament to the power of mindset. With a background in communication and Spanish, Richard has spent over a decade motivating and training bilingual telemarketers. So let's dive into his story to uncover the secrets behind his resilient mindset and how he leverages to build successful teams. Welcome to the show, Mr. Blank. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm so happy to be with you and your amazing audience today. I'm a big fan now that we're hanging out. I got to <laughs> tell you, who gets up on a Sunday morning to hang out? We I do. That. <laughs> That's why it makes this podcast so great. What time do you go? Do, do they do church at like 11 o'clock in Costa Rica? A little bit later. Some earlier services you can get 11, in there during 12 o'clock. the day. Mm-hmm. So maybe today is the day we can get you out the door to 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 check a service out if you're not already going Turn there. Right? You're ready. already dressed for it. That's you're dressed right. for it. <laughs> Going to get so, points with my mother-in-law. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, so Richard, just um, I, I said a brief intro about you, right? But just for a couple minutes, just tell us just a little bit about you, your journey, and then we'll get into some questions, try to learn some tips about mindset, right? Because for me, I've been in the military for a little over 20 years. I never had the opportunity to just go somewhere and have to be in charge and train 500 people, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't had that experience. So I'm really excited and uh, very interested in how you navigated that. But before we jump into it, let's go into hindsight, take a step back and let's learn a little bit about a uh, little baby Richard. <laughs> little baby Richard. I had a vision back in the day. And uh-huh. My mindset was a getting past parents guilt and mm. allowing people to make certain decisions for me, which was for their benefit one way or another, either through insecurity, fear, yeah. just the unknown. But yeah. I look at it like this. I live my life through certain visions. If you never get on a roller coaster, A, you never throw up, but B, you never get to do loop-de-loops. <laughs> you know, you live <laughs> life a little bit. And maybe I gravitated towards the hero's journey where mm-hmm. you left a castle to slay a dragon, save a beautiful princess and become a mm-hmm. prince. And you in the military, which I'm so proud of and thank you so much. And we'll definitely get to that later on the <laughs> skills and the mindset that, that you have. which are so beneficial in an environment that I have. Uh, My proud veterans and people who serve go right to the not front of the line. They do it through merit and experience. And they're the ones that I go to in regards Mm -hmm. to character during chaos, being calm and having a plan. First one's in, last one's out and giving you a full day, a full day. (laughs) And so these um, individuals definitely raise the bar, but... Uh, you get me emotional for a minute, but thank you oh, so much for your 20 you. years of service. You are a hero, and um, no. I was fortunate to have a grandfather and uncles that served. <laughs> Those are the, the heroes. War. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, man, my heroes. Anyway, getting back to my story. Yeah, yeah. But you have little Richard in Northeast Philadelphia when it's mm. getting cold in the wintertime, and you see Gilligan's Island, and you kind of wonder where you want to go in life. Well, I tell you what. I gravitated towards my favorite class, which was Spanish. I tell you, I was not the best student because of immaturity and I was playing sports and chasing girls. I was not focused back in my teen years. But how about if you do dedicated practice? The kid that does above and beyond, maybe does push-ups at home or shoots extra baskets or just, you know, when it's cold, they're the ones that actually go outside and start shoveling driveways. Why? Just to do a good thing and to get in shape. Mm -hmm. And when I would really study Spanish, basic Spanish, intermediate levels, just to see if I could master the grammar, which is so boring and like a chore. Hmm. But the moment that it clicked, kind of like, I don't know, pre-algebra, you know, the Pythagorean theorem, everyone knows A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, if I can make Spanish like that, Maybe I can just ride that intermediate wave and see where that goes and just add vocab. 
Mm. My point being is that people saw something different in me, that I had a drive in something that was different from the norm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't born into it. So there was nobody I could practice at home. You gotta be kidding me. So every chance I had to meet a Latino, I got such positive reinforcement. It just wasn't a pat on the head and said, good job, Skippy. They said, go Richard, go. Yeah. I'm going to add four more vocabulary words for you and send you on your way. And so I was building upon that momentum. And so when it came to be 18 years old and you had to make that big boy decision, mm -hmm. you're going to be a doctor, lawyer, architect, or spend your parents' dough or take out a huge loan mm. to go somewhere and do something that you might not even like. So that kind of scared me. But then again, I said, wait a second, let's just roll the dice again. If mm -hmm. I'm the only one of my friends I can speak Spanish, it might open doors for me. I might be able to put say habla espanol on a business card, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But little did I know that by investing in a second language and going to the University of Arizona, which mm -hmm. had a beautiful language program, I went abroad one year so I could really shed some skin. Mm -hmm. What I was doing was growing up, but I was doing it my own way. It's nice to have a little bit of direction or a balanced bike, but people need to let go. And you need to do it on your own. And so it builds character, self-confidence, mm -hmm. and self-reliance and puts hair on your chest, Lee. And I needed more hair on my chest. <laughs> and so um, I was being bold and brave. And I had to make yeah. very serious arguments to my parents, to my friends, and people that just did not understand. Mm -hmm. And I held my ground. And so my mindset was about small wins, first downs compared to touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And I also needed to look around because if there are people that I'd never met before, but I could put my hand out there and see what they think. And I got this, Hey kid, I see something here. <laughs> Why would I not do it? The stars yeah. are aligned. And how many hints am I going to get that this is my direction? It's not the clearest path, but damn it, it is a path. And so my friend in a very long winded way, that was my mindset that pretty much got me to where I am today. Wow, that was that was very well, and it wasn't long winded, uh, eloquent, eloquently uh, said. I appreciate that. Uh, just walking us through your mindset, you know, as you were growing up and how you gravitate gravitated towards Spanish. I tell you what, when I was in high school, I took two years of German, and and, and I wasn't as good as, you know, I think I passed one year with a, a, a C and one year with a D, right? So I just got enough to get the grades to pass. And I actually took Latin as well. I did get a C in Latin and I was in middle school, but I am, I am not a, what do you call it? An acquirer of languages. Right now I struggle mightily with trying to learn Spanish and I really need to learn Spanish. I'm in Southern California. There are a lot of Spanish speaking uh, individuals here. I'm in the uh, distribution business mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know, it would be a benefit. You recognize that at a young age, right? It, a light bulb came on. You know, how can I Let's take all this? Calm down for a second. I, uh oh, I, uh oh. You you mapped out your life's journey at the age of seventeen, and at eighteen, you made a decision. Is that accurate? Yes, but I found longbow. <laughs> I found the longbow. I could do distance yeah. shots now. How did I do it? Because I memorized my first expression. Mm. Me gustaría tomar café contigo. I would like to have coffee with you. And it's so unbelievable uh -huh. how that first, you know, the me gusta verb that you're using an infinitive, mm -hmm. and then you could throw anything at the end. Okay, you you got to be kidding me. And so when I <laughs> took that and I started walking up to people saying coffee here, coffee there, coffee everywhere, I always think I was batting about 900. <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> and um, that would go a long way. And I yeah. go, this is very interesting. I'm getting a nice ROI just on being smooth and having oh. an opening, and, you know, especially if you need to ask a girl to dance and yeah. you need to be bold and trying to think about what are you going to talk about the weather? You just walk up and use your 20 vocabulary words, a little bit of grammar. <laughs> All right. Now we're looking at a game and it's, and you're thinking that you need to sound like Ricardo Montalban or Julio mm. Iglesias. My friend, it's actually the quite the opposite. When you have an accent, when you're showing this um, desire to learn and open-mindedness, it's a wonderful beauty mark. You're making yourself vulnerable. Yes. It makes you powerful. And then all day long, they're teaching you like third grade vocabulary words and you're just listening like crazy. <laughs> 
Really, it's the only time you're paying attention on a date. <laughs> you have yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you're yeah. translating, and it's fun. And the next thing you know, three hours go by, and it just seems like a a poet's night. Who speaks in second languages for three hours? Mm. James Bond does, mm. and you and I do. Yeah. <laughs> and so it just made life a little more colorful. It yeah. really did enhance any sort of experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So vulnerability. Mm -hmm. How easy was it to get in that space? I know you said you were chasing females. Was it easy to get into a vulnerable state while chasing a female back in it? And, and you, I'm taking us back a little bit. You know, you were a kid at the time, but right. just, you know, because that's important, right? A lot of times we allow our ego to pull us out of that vulnerable space, right? And we lose opportunities. We lose chances in, in different things because our ego won't allow us to be vulnerable. So how did you feel back then, if you can recall, you know, was it a comfortable space to be vulnerable? Um, and even now, do you still allow yourself to be vulnerable? Because you're in a you're in a higher up position, right? Of course. Um, in life now. So yeah. do you still take that lesson and apply it to further grow? Well, Liad, I, I know you, but I don't know you as well as we're going to get to know one another. But yeah, yeah. Remember grandma and grandpa? Yeah. Hmm? Remember when you used to sit in their house and be not only on your best behavior, but you also got to participate. They tell you stories. They, they want to see yeah. you grow. I look at my foundation. I look at where I come from. I was always taught to teach women like ladies, mm -hmm. have certain respect, have certain modesty as well. Yes, sir. You can have vanity because you don't want to pretend like you're better than someone, but don't walk around with mustard on your face and a fly right. that's open. And so... There are certain social graces you need to have and, and courtesies. And so for me, it's very easy for me just to be polite, to be mm -hmm. turn taking, to be very respectful. And if there are people like on the golf course that don't have golf etiquette, they don't fix their divots and rake their traps and talk when people are hitting. Yeah, it's not right. Yeah. And so what am I going to do? I'm not going to teach you what to do. But then again, you you size up so you can see how you're doing compared to others. And so I, I just like to, once again, just try to make harmony. And yes, if egos come in the way, well, somebody definitely wants a pilot to land a plane and a surgeon to sew a heart. You want someone with the perfect shot and to win those wars. Mm. But then again, we're, we're also looking for people that are specialists in their own areas, or if they're novice in your area, don't expect them to know. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very good to share the stories of when you were growing and cracked your own codes and had to learn it the hard way so you can be the senior to the freshman and tell them how to be extra cool in the hallway. Mm. And so I'm not giving people shortcuts. I'm letting them know the score. Mm -hmm. If you go to the gym, if you work out and you eat well and you sleep well, you will get bigger. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's no shortcuts to that. You just see the results of people. Right. And right. sometimes they want to see what's in the kitchen. They want to see what happens when the cards are on the table and, for me, it's always been most important preventions over cures, and I don't like surprises. I'm not a devil's advocate, but mm -hmm. if something is my wheelhouse, it is my pleasure to show you A to Z and one to three. And then from an educated point of view, collectively, mm -hmm. we make that wise decision. And I also take the human element into consideration. I'm in an industry where there's a large turnover rate. And most people sometimes really take in these tough phone calls. And so for these soldiers, because I used to make these calls as well, I've decided to have a certain environment. I get certain judgments on it and other people praise it, but I believe in gamification. I collect mm -hmm. pinball machines, retro sure. arcade machines, jukeboxes, air hockey tables. And so instead of scolding you or putting you in an office and QAing you with KPIs and really just twisting that knife Lee, Mm -hmm. You and I, man, are going to go downstairs and play some pinball or Pac-Man. And I'm going to let you let off some steam. Mm. We charge that battery as a child when we used to play so we can laugh together. Really just laugh it out because it's not, my goodness, this weight that people put on themselves. Not just working, yeah. but mentally. And if you are able to release some of that weight, you do rise. It's easier for some and it's a forced march for others. But for me, I decided. A long time ago, my good friend, mm. to make certain priorities. And by doing so, I preserved energy, gave endurance, and became a lot more focused. And it's part of the game. 
there are some disgruntled ex-employees, people that have envy and will write about me, mm -hmm. but so be it. Mm -hmm. That is the price you pay if you're willing to put your chest out there and be a leader. And so as long as you can look at your eyes at the end of the day, and regardless of the outcome, be very mm -hmm. content with yourself, just on honorable intentions. That to me is a chivalrous day. That's the thing where your, your soul is okay and your heart is okay. It's not heavy. Yeah. And, and you can always have money. You can make it and lose it and loan it and not get it back or spend it and money, 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 whatever. You know, mm -hmm. your best friends are the times where you guys are just kicking it and not spending any money. Yeah. And so, um, Mesh, look what you do to your audience, Lee. You get the best <laughs> out of everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. Hey, so thank you. Once again, I love listening to your stories. Have you written a novel? No, but uh, my mindset is to write children's books one day. That there you go. Rube go Goldberg it. experiments in mini golf. There you yeah. go. <laughs> hey, so let's take it back a little bit. Richard, can you share the moment uh, that you decided to move to Costa Rica and what signs indicated that it was time for such a significant change? And, you know, you've gone abroad. You said you went to Arizona State and doing that uh, coursework, you, you were able to go abroad and immerse yourself in the language. So maybe this wasn't a significant change, um, but what made you decide to go to Costa Rica? That happened at 27 when I was in between jobs. But when I spent my junior year abroad in Spain, I did something a little different than most. In Christmas break, I got two months to travel and I did not go home. I got a URL pass, a couple grand, and I was doing the youth hostel thing. Who did we have fun? <laughs> Pink Palace in Corfu and in Amsterdam and in Prague and even in Morocco, Tangier and everywhere in between. But this is what I did differently than everybody else. I used to get up early and go to the museums and the ruins and to see certain beautiful churches. Mm -hmm. My most are crashed or saying, I'll see you later, man. I have to do this. And it's not like dad forcing you to do it on a Sunday or a project in school where you got to write a book report. At 21 years old, I was going to the most amazing and beautiful places in the world. Mm -hmm. And I, I really grew up then. I wasn't a child anymore because I made the efforts to it. I took extra time on it. I would meet people, 50 people a day for 10 minute conversations talking about artwork, mm -hmm. La Guernica and El Prado and Madrid. How cool. What am I that sophisticated and educated? <laughs> I was for that 10 minutes. <laughs> of course. But um, did it change my life? You're damn right. Yeah. I wanted to live a little bit more. And so when this opportunity at 27 came, I had really about 60 days to come down and teach English at my friend's center. But then I really asked myself that I, I fell in love down here too. Mm -hmm. The girl of my dreams who I'm still married to. And so we've been together 24 years. So do you go Dude, home yeah. or do you risk it all to marry the girl of your dreams? A little Costa Rican exotic tropical princess. Of course you do. <laughs> so I made a deal with my friend. Decided yeah. to pay it forward in regards to my experience. Yeah. They in turn decided to teach me the business from the inside out, not see level. Mm -hmm. And guess what I learned the best experience when you eat with your crew, you sleep with them, you laugh and cry with them. Ooh, do you get their respect? And when I sat in those cubicles for four years, I learned the mindset of my soldiers and I earned their stripes and I earned the respect. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of skipped. I went from not, like not glorified agent, like friends with the owner <laughs> to then owning my own place. And so I never got tainted by office politics, backstabbing promotions through supervisor mm. management. I, I never ruined the, the beauty and the innocence of what I see this art of speech industry. Right. And so maybe it got preserved. And so I wasn't jaded. And when I began my, my journey, Mm -hmm. I started slow and steady by renting a turnkey station at a blended center. I didn't have the outlay or the cash. After two years, I had the stability of the clients and it's some capital. So I rented space, bought secondhand equipment and furniture, built out a server room, was there for six years. Mm -hmm. Then I had even more stability, more capital. And we're currently in our location where I bought an old building, put on a third floor capacity <clears> for 300. <throat> mm -hmm. It's, it's the tortoise. It's not the hare. I wish yeah. I had a shortcut. I wish I had this overnight success, but damn it. I had to grind this out yeah. yard by yard, man. Yeah. 
And trust me, the defense, they have some big players against you. Mm. But for some odd reason, you are just grinding out those yardages and getting those first downs. And I'm a hockey player, man. These are like third period slap shots in my face as a goalie. <laughs> and I still got to take it. And be like, yeah. Bring more, bring more. And so um, it may be the Philly in me, but I kind of mm-hmm. like the taste of blood a little bit too. I don't want it too easy. I want to earn it. Yeah, And it only makes me stronger and smarter. I get more focused uh-huh. when the pressure comes on because I don't have time and I don't have chance. And you know what's fun to rely on your own decision? Do you know why? We spoke about this before the podcast. It's because we're bald. And when you're bald, you're smart. <laughs> and at this stage where I have a white beard and I'm bald, I better be making the best decision. So, uh, yeah, I'll tell them that as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this. You said you're a hockey fan. Are you a football fan? Philadelphia Eagles die hard. I love Randall Cunningham. Okay, Okay, there you go. Anyway, I'm a Steelers fan. I'm I'm from Maryland myself, but I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I did used to live in in Pennsylvania for a while. And I was closer to Philadelphia than I was to Pittsburgh. And I got all kind of hell out in Pennsylvania for that. Uh, wearing my Pittsburgh Steelers hat. So, anywho, I just wanted to ask you that, and uh, I thought we were better, but we're we're not as close as I thought we were. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to believe who, who was in my graduating class at Avington. Ooh. I had Sean, I had Sean Wooden. Oh, who wow! For the Dolphins, remember what he did when he was uh, for Notre Dame? <laughs> yeah, he saved that. He saved that huge play. Oh. And Eddie George was with me. We had Eddie George for until about tenth grade. And then he went off to the private school. So whatever we're doing in our water or where we're at in Northeast Philly, it kind of packs a punch. But shout yeah. out to Maryland. I spent a summer in Ocean City, Maryland on the boardwalk. Oh, it's beautiful out there. Doggies. It was amazing. It's beautiful out there. I was born, I'm actually from Baltimore, um, but definitely been out to Ocean City. It's beautiful out there. Beautiful place. Oh, scandals and secrets. <laughs> Come on, man. That's for another podcast. <laughs> hey, so you, you, glazed over it just a little bit but how did the move to costa rica meeting your beautiful princess and all this stuff uh setting up this business learning from the people who would later work for you like mm-hmm. what did this move help you discover about yourself and your capabilities well first is put your stuff in storage so you don't lose it my so man I was able to bring all my stuff down here and have my <laughs> treasures but no, when I when I came here, it was at the perfect age. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have a mortgage, didn't have a wife or kids or anything. And I was just out of college right before you hit 30. So, but you also realize it is your last hurrah. Mm. And so you better get up early, stay up late and drink this as much as you can. Yeah. And so for me, it was a wonderful transition because every day felt like a Saturday. I think I got my 2020 vision back. Things seem brighter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And you know, it's interesting as well. When something is brand new to you, you start noticing smaller details compared to going on that same bus or train or car ride for the last 20 years. You don't notice anything anymore. Right. And the fact that you're just looking around like a dog outside a window is amazing. It's kind of fun. And um, I enjoyed that spark Mm -hmm. and I didn't want it to end. And I kind of knew how to harness it as well. I just needed to be careful. Mm -hmm. And so when I showed that commitment with my friend, not just to be very good friends, but I would try to learn the business and Mm -hmm. and contribute. It was a nice thing. And I didn't get sent home, still did well. Yeah. And uh, mastered my Spanish then. Oh, Mm. think about the double dipping. Let's even say triple dipping. I'm hanging out <laughs> with like mid 20s. So it was like, you know, 13th grade. Everyone's fun as hell in the call center. Yeah. I'm learning an industry. So that's keeping your mind sharp. And mm-hmm. the Spanish is just because I'm walking into it at like a good B plus level, like yeah. solid B plus. Right. I was never a student. Now I'm ready. Now yeah. I'm ready. Ready, yeah. ready, ready. Got my equipment, my sticks, net, ready to go. <laughs> and my onboarding and learning level just skyrocketed from there. I was retaining, using left and right all day long Spanish. So forget about it. And so I said, this is a very nice stage of my life. I'm more mature. I have the skills, the discipline. Why don't we just ride this and see how long it goes? But the falling in love thing made it easy because it eased me into my thirties. And then come mid thirties, I was getting a little older. Mm-hmm. And I said, this is kind of weird too. coach put me in at least for one play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, 
it just so happens the one play turned into three plays, which turned into 10 that built me up to 150 plays. Mm. And I got a, a half decent business. Yeah. And it's, um, it's very humbling. You don't underestimate yourself, but unless it was handed to you or school sets it for you, or it's in the blue book and the, and the prints, it's very, it's very weird to mm. go out in your ship, which is seaworthy and go exploring because you could either come back broke or even sink, or you might find some riches and come back with amazing tales to talk about. And so I, I almost wished that it was planned for me because my mind relaxes that way when I have a schedule plan. But then again, the zig and the zag. <laughs> Oof, why do you think they have that expression? Wild card. So unless your mindset is not reckless, but it's willing to accept the occasional big bet in front of all your friends, you know, where you hit the three in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do it all the time, but I did it today. And um, yeah. you might as well be a champ for a day. Mm -hmm. Man, I'd rather be a champ for a day and lose 99 than have never one day to be a king. Mm. I'm a prince just like you. But when do we ever really get a chance to be a king? And so if this opportunity, and you asked me this at 27, I saw it. I knew it. I said, Richard, if you do not take this, you will regret it for the rest of your days. And you know when I really knew? Because I couldn't look at myself in the mirror talking about it. I go, bro, what's wrong with you? 99% hmm. is pushing you here. What is holding you here? Right. Guilt? Commitments? Uh, going to work in, in Tempe? Getting a job at Honeywell or something? Which they probably wouldn't hire me anyway. <laughs> How am I going to do it? So I said, you know, Lee, I'll be crazy in life. Dance in the rain. Yeah. You know, let's just see what could happen. And um, if it does hit and your numbers do come in, once again, be humble. Don't think you have the Midas touch. Come on, we don't do have magic dust. Just once again, put your arms out and start dancing and go, yeah, <laughs> sunshine on me. And so um, me today, you tomorrow. Yeah. And so when you see people that are having a good day or ladies that come out of a beauty parlor and look beautiful, yeah. stop and compliment them and let them know that they're making the greatest hamburger ever or call Billy over and let them know Johnny's doing a great job working at your table. Why are you doing this? Because I love positive escalations. I love complimenting people, mm. but not fake ones. I'm going to let you know if Johnny's killing it and the burger's tasty. I'm mm. really poke into the kitchen and go, my man. That burger was great. When was the last time someone told the big guy, my man, the burger was great? Never. Yeah. And you wonder why you get the best table or extra pickles or when you call a company back, Judy transfers you to Lee because you, you told Judy she's so sweet. And when you got on the phone with Lee, you let him know he's got the greatest assistant. And you mm. also did it in writing. And when you left the voicemail. So I'm calling Lee back to set up that appointment to close that deal. Yeah, close the deal. Mesh, Judy's it. like, Richard. Judy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know it's set up and it's teed up. If I was there, you'd probably feed me. But um, what a beautiful way to start a relationship with people that's healthy and clean. These are mm -hmm. nice pipe, uh, you know, building pipelines mm -hmm. and working them in the healthy way so you don't have to angle in there. Just anchor in a natural way. Oh, and guess what, Lee? Mm -hmm. We use the military alphabet on the phone. We do it so many reasons. A, because your email won't bounce back and B, a lot of heroes and gentlemen like yourself and others mm -hmm. have served. And it just, while the call is ending, there's another encore song. We're going to talk a minute about your 20 proud years. And I'm going to thank you again. Right. And maybe when certain holidays come up or moments come up, you get that special email on the side or a voicemail, mm -hmm. whatever. Why? Because we did our due diligence. I'm just not calling you sir. Mm -hmm. You're my man Lee that gets a three-piece scoop <laughs> on a Sunday. And you always should. You should always get that triple scoop. You'll always get extra like cheese it. with me. And if people do that stuff naturally, don't be surprised. If your business grows and your network and life grows, because people are going to talk such nice things about you behind your back. Yes. Positive escalations. I love, I love that. I love that.
Um, I do. You know what? I'm not going to dime out a whole state, but I will uplift the whole state. <laughs> when I moved to California, yeah. service levels were significantly more positive for me. It was like there was great training. You know what I mean? And it almost was to the point where maybe it was just great hiring because the people who were there to serve you or help you or assist you were invested in your positive customer experience. Yes. Right. And then I'm listening to you talk right now. And it reminds me of a friend of mine when I was in the army, when someone kind of showed me this firsthand and how you genuinely take an interest in people and how that genuine interest blossoms into a very, I would say productive or, you know, back and forth relationship where you can just get things done without whatever it is that's blocking normal transactions. So um, hearing you articulate that beautiful analogies, it's just wonderful because that is a positive escalation. I didn't know what it was called. Now I got a word. <laughs> now I got a phrase, right? That can really describe what that is. Now another and, technique, my warrior, is also positive and negative reinforcement. Yeah, yeah, what absolutely. What you can do in a lucid way is to adjust yeah. tones. You use the word assist, beautiful guide, of course. Eliminate words like help. Fall yeah. on certain swords. You can sacrifice pieces. So, Lee, I would say for my clarification, go you go. Did A, B, C, or one, two, three? I'll fall on that. So I know your dog's barking. Mm -hmm. I know I can't hear you on your cell phone, but I'm not going to say, excuse me, excuse me. You don't do things like that. Yeah. And also people leave doors open. They never use tie downs or clarifications. They never say, sounds good, right, Lee? Makes sense, right, Lee? They just continue talking. Mm. Yeah. It's like the ice cream guy. Come on, man. Why another block? Stop already. <laughs> Why am I keep running <laughs> to answer your question? I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. But how about this, my man? When I do the awesome. company name spike, mm -hmm. when you answer the phone, hindsight, the podcast, how are you today? Yeah. I'm a mystery shopper. I'm using anonymity to my advantage. They heard the sound. They just don't know where it is yet, but they heard it. Mm -hmm. And so then Judy will say to me, oh, who's this compared to we're good thanks? Why are you calling as a sales? That's a positive one. Who's this? Mm -hmm. And I would say it's Richard Blank. I'm so glad that you asked. And then she says, Richard Blank, which company are you with? And we use a buffer boomerang technique. Judy, that's an excellent question. The name of my company is Costa Rica's call center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Name drop them to buffer the negativity if yeah, there's yeah. some. I'm going to let Lee know that's an excellent question. I'm going to repeat the question. So you're not repeating the question again. That puts that to bed. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send back this with manners and an adjustment of tongues. You don't need to yell at me. And so when I get transferred to you, the first thing I'm going to say is not hindsight, the podcast. How are you? I'm going to say, this is Lee. No one gets through to me. I'm the boss. I'm the mean guy. Hello, this is Lee. Just got to let you know, Judy's great. <laughs> you have no <laughs> idea who I am. And then you go, I know she's my wife or she's been with me 10 years. And then you'll say, who's this? Hey, Lee. So glad that you asked. <laughs> my name is Richard Blank, but I'm not saying my company yet. I got a double dip yet. Right. And you're going to go, who is Richard Blank? Not we're good thanks or what you're selling. Mm. And I go, Lee, I knew you were going to ask that. The name of my company is Costa Rica's Call Center. Yeah. And then you play mm. your odds. But why half court? Why three point? Sometimes foul. But if you play that technique, remember, you're reducing and you're bringing in. And these are checkpoints. So now you're looking at dunks. These are just odds. It's not guaranteed. But damn it, it's a better play. Yeah. And you can do this and on a 10 minute call, Lee, instead of doing one 10 minute call, which is a huge breath, a huge bite, a sip, you gotta be kidding. I like 20, 30 second calls. Mm -hmm. Mish, you combine them together, easier to carry. You can fix one before moving forward. Why leave a door open? And so listen, we're doing a horizontal play and I got 10 things to talk about, but if you stop on the fourth one, I am stopping and I'm stacking open-ended questions. Not, do you like ice cream? What kind of ice cream do you like? I'll get the double or triple answer. Very easy. <laughs> yeah. And so people need to shave time, pay more attention, active listening. I shave constantly, like choose your own adventure. It's not steak, it's, it's lobster. Stop already. 
And you got, you know how amazing a rudder of a ship is? It can be the smallest thing moving the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. So you, you do the dance. I'm just going to smile on you and let you lead it. But I'm not going <laughs> to let you step on my toes. And so if you can learn this diplomacy and strategy and utilize the thesaurus and certain timings, Is it a manipulation? Of course it is, but it's not lying. It's just more conversation structure because Mm -hmm. most people are not versed to it, don't have the practice. They're just chatting, email, right? Sending texts. Mm -hmm. So they're not used to this live interpersonal communication, which you're just giving a thousand tell signs in a minute. Yeah. And so I, I think once again, we need to revert back to more connecting communication or even a little bit more attention giving but that's what i teach here so thank you again (laughs) i love the sports analogies hey what it sounds like you don't have any or didn't have any and that's why i'm going to ask this question because i want to know what fears or limiting beliefs did you have to overcome in this journey and and how did you tackle these obstacles to ensure your success now i know you said hey we're all we're all princes how often do you get the chance to be the king right you had an opportunity presented to you was there a fear um, prior to you saying yes check please i'll take that opportunity how far back you want to go i made this decision as a little little boy let's talk about it well you realize something that if you make certain decisions small decisions not biggie Mm -hmm. biggie ones that's that's the ones you got to go to whatever but just little ones who you choose to be friends with, or did you get up earlier that day, even iron your clothes? Mm -hmm. I I saw certain returns. And so if I were, if I had enough guts to learn a second language, if I had enough guts to move abroad, to fall in love, I am so proud of that foundation. Anything can grow from that because I can play funny with gypsum and purling and windows and fancy curb appeal. But if it's not a solid structure, like from 1922 grandpa's house, that thing's not moving. And I love when people say the foundation's strong, the foundation's strong. Well, man, I'd rather have a foundation. You can keep (laughs) your fancy curbside appeal. Yeah. I want something that's not going to get... Do you remember the, the, the three little pigs? Mm-hmm. The fancy house with sticks. I always liked the hay house. That was kind of cool. But it was the brick house. And you know, it's kind of funny. He had the attitude too. He's like, yeah, come on. I was like, I think I like this guy. <laughs> you know? At least... Yeah. But then, you know, you also have to realize something about the bricks. Okay? Yeah. You ever build the brick by brick? Huh? You know how long that takes. You know how long that takes. But the man that does brick by brick, Sundays, long nights, early mornings, only one out there, rain on them, you name it, brick yeah. by brick by brick, five more bricks, 50 more bricks, my back hurts, keep going. And every brick you talk to the brick, you curse the brick, yeah. but then at the end, you love the brick. Because if it didn't make you angry to put it back down again and do it perfectly, then you're like, ah! But that's what it's about. You're being tested one by one. And you tell me when you put 100 bricks down, you, nobody else, you stand in front of that. You try to knock me down. Don't spin it. And where's your wall? Where's your bricks? And so I size up from time to time people that come by me with a white glove and make their suggestions. And I'm cool with all of that. But then again, what have you done where you can literally compare yourself to me? And I'm not saying it is an elitist, but damn, man, unless you're a call center person that moved from Philadelphia that speaks Spanish and started his company with his wife, how the hell are you going to compare notes? But if you (laughs) find me one, I'd love to take them out to dinner. (laughs) Let's just just talk about it. So when people say, hey, man. You need to be doing this. Okay. (laughs) What's your plan? How much does it cost? Well, I don't know those things. Well, that's cool. Let's keep talking about it. Hmm. Well, I just think you should do that. Yeah. And I think I should be driving five Ferraris. Well, what do you want me to say? (laughs) You know, it's so amazing what Hollywood does to CEOs or even my industry. Yeah. And, you know, I love the kitchen under the hood thing because the real guys in the military, besides 
flag winning battle. What about the nine months of preparation and going through the mud and, and supporting your friends that miss their family mm -hmm. and the chow and the, and, the, and the being in the rain yeah. and those conditions that just train you to want to break, but you don't. Yeah. I, there's no way I can even compare myself to what military does. But if you want to just talk about the mindset of winning and losing, you have to live with yourself. And life is long. And I would love to lick my wounds because I was in the battle compared to being some punk on the side making comments. I mean, yeah. I, 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 when we were growing up, and I'm glad that you know weapons weren't used or people really didn't get hurt. But when they were the stupid fist fights in middle school and high school, it was usually between friends. Mm -hmm. And it's usually just because, I don't know, thank God no one got hurt. Mm -hmm. But then again, and I got into one, <laughs> my one fight, mm -hmm. and I'm still friends with this cat. I buy him drinks at reunions, but I needed that. At 17 years old, he and I needed to punch each other in the face a couple of times, not to hurt each other, just to see if we had enough manhood mm -hmm. to walk into the middle of a field in front of 100 people. McKinley Field, by the way. And thanks for not suspending me for doing that. <laughs> and, um, and we were good friends. It was kind of yeah. weird. But it needed to be done because we both were going through weird stages of growing up. And I guess we wanted to test each other mm -hmm. physically. And we made sure not to hurt. But then again, we definitely wanted to not be embarrassed. And um, when I look about that, do I look at it fondly? No. But when I see this gentleman at our reunions, it's always one of my first drinks that I buy many mm -hmm. hugs and photographs. And I tease again, say, you want to go around too? Like Rocky and Apollo. <laughs> of course we're not fighting. Come on, we're 50. Yeah. But, um, but what a fun story out of all my friends in high school. It was the only one I fought. <laughs> so we mm -hmm. got we to gotta talk about that. Yeah. Um, and that shows maturity and adulthood because what am I going to fight them at the reunions? You don't do yeah. things like that. You grow up. And so that was another, I guess, good moment for me of the one test in life. Did I ever have to do something like that? Yeah. Yeah. If that makes any sort of sense. No, I get the connection. I can appreciate that because when the opportunity is there, you know, you're standing with the kids day to day, you're standing on business, right? Uh, it, it's something that you had to do. It's something that builds character. You know, nowadays it's a little different because of all the other, you know, mindsets and short thinking mentality that we have uh, with, with certain decisions that we make. But I'm going to tie, I'm going to bring it back and I want to ask you about something because you went to Costa Rica and I keep harping on this and you met your, you met your, your now wife. But before that, can you talk about the importance of building a support network while you were there? Now, I know you, you talked about hanging out with the, with the workers. You talked right. about your relationship with the owner of a company, mm -hmm. right? So what is the importance from your perspective, from your journey, from your experiences of building a strong support network? You have to separate two things. You got to have the players that get things done for you. And then you have the intimate people in your lives that you bring to your home and you share things with. And so I myself might be seen as a Blanco, as a target, charge me extra 20 to 50% if I show up. And so I needed to have a face man of my A-team. I also mm -hmm. needed a BA <laughs> and a little bit of a uh, Murdoch, a little bit of craziness. Yeah. So I, I, I built a crew of uh, some interesting local home court advantage players that would set things up for me immediately, get things mm -hmm. done quickly know what to say, how to say it, and where to go. Mm. Save me time, money, and also I got to see the ins and the outs, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, these were people that if you paid premium would be at the ready. Mm -hmm. Call them anytime. Mm -hmm. Don't nickel and dime people like that when you need them. And so you make your money back, and you also, once again, have that sort of uh, comfort levels here. But that's just in regards to the street stuff, buying the computers or cars or my pinball machines. But when it came to starting my business, I needed to hire chief technical officers and local attorneys and accountants that know the labor laws and have experience, human resource directors, certain individuals with security. And so I'm the trunk of the tree, but I definitely needed branches and especially roots. And I'd be very foolish to try to wear all hats. Yes, you can understand the departments, but how am I going to go to Cisco school? And how am I going to learn the labor laws here? I mean, I can, and I know it. 
but to get those certificates and pass those exams and stuff. I mean, I'd, I'd rather hire an expert. These are all full-time jobs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you need to sometimes have faith in people. Did I make every good decision? No. There are mm -hmm. people that disappointed me. So I get disappointed more than angry. Some had good arguments for leaving and others were just, others just really lost their way in regards mm -hmm. to morals and ethics. And I'm the kind of guy that if you're going to start strong with me, let's end strong. And there are certain times where we need to go take a walk, have a coffee and a meal and look at it differently. But as I say before, if I was raised that way and I'm the only one that shows up at a respect party, what do you want me to do? No one else has the heart to look at me in the eyes, shake my hand. And mm -hmm. I'm okay if you peace out, but look in my eyes, shake my hand. You've been with me 11 years. I know your wife's giving you problems. And I know you're under stress. Mm -hmm. We can talk about it. There's smooth transitions. I can give recommendations. I can lend a hand. But whispers and shadows and surprises, especially those where you have put so much trust. There's that ruin me. No, it only makes me stronger. Why? Because I got sized up again. I'm the only one that once again showed up for the respect party on time in a suit. And so, um, but then again... There are things that happen in people's homes that we don't know about, and they're under an enormous amount of pressure and influence, and there's no way that I outrank their wives. And so, you know, you just got to play it cool. But I do call the balls and the strikes, which I'm sure your best sergeant did. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like praising in public and making mm -hmm. suggestions in private. And um, in addition to that, I do give guilt because I'm very good at that too. I go, come on, Lee. You're out of character. You're not smiling today. What's wrong? You didn't even say good morning to me when I was playing pinball. I go, what happened? Yeah. Last week you did 44. Today you're only at 12. What's up, my man? What's going <laughs> on with you? Come on, Marilyn. What's up, Baltimore? <laughs> and you look at me and you're like, you're right, Richard. I go, you know I'm right. You know I'm right. And so then next thing you know, two hours later, you knock on my office door and you go, Hey, uh, Hefe, can I come in for a second? I go, come on, you know you can. I'll give you some coffee. And you go, listen, I apologize for earlier. And I go, mm -hmm. okay, apology accepted. But you don't have to apologize. You're real. Mm -hmm. You got two kids. Mm -hmm. I know what you're doing. And you're just having a weird day. So what we needed to do is take a quick time out, readjust, and then get you back again. No one's in trouble. Mm. I'm not in trouble. Why would you be in trouble? I was a soldier. Did the mm. lady curse at you on the phone? Yeah. Were you on the phone for 14 minutes, not eight minutes? Yeah. Did you get a resolution? No, she hung up on me. Like, All right, champ. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's get you in the corner. You know, get Mickey in there to talk yeah. to you and give you some advice. <laughs> like, Come on, man. You've done things that are 10 times harder than this. You learned your second language. How are you going to let this lady yell at you? <laughs> and um, that's all. We can laugh at it, too. And then they say, you're the best. And I go, because of you. And I'm not trying to hug and cry and do things like that. But guess what? I've also had people say, I can't take it. I'm quitting. Lee, don't quit. I can't take it anymore, Richard. Dude, relax. Just stay off the phone for half an hour. Why don't you take the rest of the day? No, man. That did it. Judy's F you. I was in the industry for nine years. I worked at all the big boys. But I think I want to go back and work at a hotel now or go to the beach. And I go, please don't. Because if you can't handle this level... And I, this is when I get straight and come to Jesus. Lee, if you can't handle this level, how are you going to pay off a mortgage, raise a family, even run a business? These are the sort of levels you need to be able to handle mm. because your clients are going to be bigger mm. and there will be responsibilities. I'm not asking you to give up, but this shouldn't be the breaking point. If there are things that brought you to this level, maybe we need to address those or address them yourself. I'm not prying, but damn, man, don't throw some... Just because some guy threw you a little left hook on the second. Come on, we're not throwing in the towel. <laughs> we put nine years in you. Yeah. Come on, we just celebrated your birthday last month. I bought you a, I bought you a cookie puss. Do you yeah. remember those from yeah. Carvel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lee, I got you a cookie puss. You can't quit after I get you a cookie puss. <laughs> Those are sort of things I'll say. That's a Philly way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't quit someone that buys you a cookie puss or a fudgy the whale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. Mm. Hey, I appreciate that, Richard. Hey, 
So I asked you a few questions, and, and I love I love your responses, every last one of them. You but is there fun. something? <laughs> but, but is there something that you like to talk about that we haven't covered yet? A couple of things. First is I, yeah. I sponsor a local band down here, Igni Faroki, <clears throat> and we hired the bassist of In Excess, Gary Gary Beers, to play on a track, Shine Like the Sun. So that was an extremely cool, surreal experience for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also an avid collector of classic pinball machines. How did One you get how did, I, another man's treasure? I saw that. How did you how did you what's the lure? How did you get into collecting those uh, machines? Do you remember Ricky Schroeder and Silver Spoons? How he mm -hmm. had that arcade in his mansion? Yeah. Didn't you want one? <laughs> we all wanted one. I, uh, of course we all do. <laughs> and so just like Tom Hanks in the movie Big, yeah. or anybody that happens to come in a little bit of money, what do you spend it on? Well, for me, I spend it on suits and pinball machines. And um, <laughs> it's interesting, but sad at the same time. Mm. These arcades are going out of business. And mm -hmm. The machines that I look for, like the classics, like asteroids and stuff, those are, you can't find those. Mm -hmm. But amongst the fighting machines, the ultimate fighter, Mortal Kombat's, occasionally you find a pinball. And so I would have to drive up to four hours up in the mountains to some guy's bodega and Joey, Jimmy and Johnny help me load it and we bring <laughs> it back victorious. I tell you what, you want to know a happy marriage? 99%. She gets it. What's my 1%? My pinball machines. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> as long as I got the space in my game room at the house, uh, we're good to go. But um, I love the restoration. Yeah. My oldest machine is a 1970 Bally's Camelot. The newest one is a mid 90s Last Action Hero Data East. Mm. And my suggestion, I have a couple suggestions. I love the real classic ones because they used to paint play field and it's electromechanical, like the old wheels and the bells. The newer ones are extremely expensive and they're very tough to fix. Mm -hmm. But if you find some in the 80s and 90s, you can replace some of the CPUs and the boards that are behind there. So instead of fixing something that's corroded and old, that's 30, 40 years old, buy something for a couple hundred bucks, replace the back of the marquee, all of that stuff. And the remaining is just really the maintenance of the play field and some of the wires and the... And so instead of hiring these electricians for hundreds of dollars, that tinker and turn on a light and... You think she's coming back to life. I have a very good friend down here and goes, hey, Richie, why don't we do this? Let's just replace all the placas in the back of them. Your machines will be working. So I got 15 of them working now. <laughs> it's I'm, amazing. Right. <laughs> but my point being is it's not as expensive as you think. You're going to get dipped on it if you get people that are coming here slow rolling you. So my suggestion is get it, restore it, take care of it. They'll last forever. I love it. All right. What else? I, and I cut you off and I, may, I had you talking about your... The, uh, the machines. Was oh, there, that's was all there... right. But you know what? Not to end on a sour note, but I like to give some really good mindset advice to people that have helped mm. me along the way. It's, it's really just not being hard on oneself. You have to compare, I got yous, but there's always someone that's taller than me, can run faster than me, <laughs> you know, stronger than me. Mm -hmm. Come on, we're all been in the gym before. Mm -hmm. But if you set your own personal goals, it's nice. What's interesting is I'm in a very small bubble here. And so when I go back to Philadelphia or Arizona or, or when my friends come visit, it kind of snaps me out of this sort of reality into where I came from. And I, I get a lot of compliments on taking the chance because everyone has it in them and they've all done exceptionally well in their careers, but each one of them each one of them kind of really wanted to roll the wild card dice mm. once in their life and not go to a family business or be forced into something or pressured into something to a lot of it does have to deal with traveling abroad, living abroad, yeah. trying other industries, maybe. And, and some people have said this in confidence, marrying outside of their faith or their mm. tradition, or maybe not going into scholastic career expectations, not saying one is better than another. I'm not even going there. Mm -hmm. But some people say I was under an enormous amount of pressure to do A, B, C, and D, and I had to. Richard, I, I, I would have been interested to see what a parallel life would have been like, you know? And so uh, I get that sort of thing where people, I live vicariously through individuals 
Mm -hmm. as I've heard that come back to me where I've inspired them to learn a language or move abroad or send their kids abroad or, or whatever. And so, right. um, how nice. Yeah. The fact that certain actions could have an influence or people can think about it or even take the time to respond to it. And, um, I find that very flattering. Right. And so I, I try to keep making my friends proud. It's not a bad, uh, a bad goal. That's awesome. Yeah. And it also encouraging and inspiring as well. So that's awesome. Well, hey. money loses its luster. Uh huh. And as I say, when with jewels and money and stuff, it's great, but it loses yeah. its luster. It loses its, in my mind, value. These millionaires sit in their mansions alone while the local guy that doesn't have two dimes to rub together is the most popular kid in town. That's why you see sometimes these GoFundMe pages. I know mm -hmm. some of them are under certain questionable circumstances, but if people love the local guy at the high school or these stories where the community, when the whole community comes together, I love hearing stories like that because that person never expected it and just gave love constantly mm -hmm. and got yeah. it back. Um, that's what I'm saying. When you have essence, when you have true character, you don't need to be covered with the silks and the jewels. In fact, if you look at certain ancient structures and artwork, a lot of the people are naked <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's very powerful yeah. because once again, you're looking at the true strength of the individual when they have nothing. No, in fact, they have everything. Right. It's only us that created the artwork and the jewels and the clothes. In essence, we're, I'm not trying to sound philosophical, but I always believe that if you have your backbone, Mm -hmm. And if you have what literally gets you there, that if it's the last 10% of your army that protects your king and protects your castle, that has to be the strongest. Oh, yeah. That has to be the spark. It's got to be the, you know, whatever it takes for you to be able to, the flint, to get the spark, to get it going. Because, you know, it's interesting when people say when they're out in the woods and they feel like they're about to die. Mm -hmm. If they're only able to light a fire, that's more than enough for them to almost feel like they got another day and it's, they're, they're feeling the heat. And it's kind of weird, man, when they just go back to the basics of basics of basics of what could then get you back up again. Yeah. So enough with the gold and the jewels and the phones and <laughs> it's fire out in the woods when you're wet and tired and hungry. <laughs> you know, you want fire. That's it. And so, that's it. That's it, my man. I want fire. I want it. I want to see the smile on people's faces when you say good morning to them because no one else is saying good morning to Judy. Will you stop for a second and say good morning to somebody and people behind you in line are like, oh, an extra 10 seconds. <laughs> you know what? No, yeah. really, you to take my time. Judy, your hair looks great today. And you hear the guy behind you like, come Hurry on. Up. <laughs> I got things to do. Well, I have things to do as well. I love this it. This young lady hasn't been complimented and that's what we're here to do. There it is. Yeah. Hey, so so, Richard, can you share best ways for uh, the listeners to connect with you and, and learn more about your work? Well, you could buy a plane ticket and come down and visit me in Costa Rica. I'd love to have you here. We're, we're north awesome. of Panama, south of Nicaragua. Just real yeah. quick, Costa Rica is the only democratic society in Central America. There's no standing army, Lisa. They put all of their money back into education with a 95% literacy rate. Wow. Amazon, HP, Intel, Oracle. The big boys are here. And so we're known for neutral accents, best infrastructure, mountain time zone, you know, right mm, there. Yeah. But we also have a very large Facebook fan page. We've got 136,000 local Costa Ricans on this page. It's not just for my business. Mm -hmm. I let everybody advertise on it. I'm the, I'm the town square, mm -hmm. right? And I'm the speakeasy. Mm. <laughs> and so when this goes live, I'm going to put it on there and you'll have more exposure here in Central America, and it'll also give your audience a, a chance to see the pulse of the BPO industry in Central America, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't thank you enough. You know, Lee, you do a great podcast. This was a lot of fun today. Oh, well, you make it easy. You're a great guest. So thank you. And, uh, t you know, today's conversation with you, Richard, it's been like nothing short of inspiring. 
uh, from recognizing the need for change to building a robust support network and overcoming obstacles. You didn't really seem to have too many obstacles, but Rich's journey <laughs> exemplifies the power of a resilient mindset. And thank you, Richard, for sharing your insights and experience with me. Uh, and to the listeners, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to Hindsight, the podcast, so you won't miss any episodes. And until next time, remember that every challenge is just a moment in time and your mindset can turn it into an opportunity for growth. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And while I have you here, why don't you take your mouse and go over and click on that subscribe button? No, no, not right there. Over to the right. T no, no, down, down, right, right there. Boom. Thank you. Now, thank you for subscribing to Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones.